Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make quilted fabric to make the Sew DIY slippers. This is a pattern that I released about a month ago and there are two designs of slippers included. One's a booty style, you can wear the lining up or down. And the other style is a little skimmer. These are really nice for summer when you don't need as much warmth as you do with a booty. So to help you out, today's video is going to show you a few different ways to mark the quilting lines on your fabric and then show you a couple of ways to quilt it on your sewing machine. Let's get started. So here I have my fabric and my batting all ready to prepare for quilting. As you can see, I've cut my fabric out a little bit bigger than the, than the pattern piece just in case it shrinks up while we quilt it. Sometimes that happens, it doesn't mean you did anything wrong, but just once you get all the stitching on there, sometimes it's, sometimes it's a little bit smaller. So I've taken my pattern piece and set it on top of my fabric and just drawn loosely with a piece of chalk the outline of my pattern piece. So if you know how to free motion quilt, you can definitely do that and do an improvisational pattern. You can also do an improvisational straight line pattern. I often like to just zigzag back and forth a few times. I think it looks really cool and fun. There's no reason that you have to do something super planned out, but if you want to, it's a really fun way to get creative. So just like when you're sewing any kind of garment, there are a lot of different tools that you can use to mark your fabric. Here I have a few of them. I have regular old Taylor's chalk. Just, you go like that. Um, this is just a normal piece of chalk, again. <laughs> Both of these will make marks and can provide guidelines for stitching. You could also use a pen that will wash away later, or this is a quilter's pencil. All of these would work really well, and you just want to check and make sure that they are going to come off of your fabric later. So maybe test them in one of these like little spots that you probably won't use on your slippers, and just make sure that those lines are going to wash away later. You can also use a tool called a Hera marker, and this is essentially a bone folder. And I actually have a bone folder right here from my old... Uh, art school days when I took bookmaking classes and it's the same concept. This one is made out of plastic and you're going to take it and you just mark a crease on your fabric. So instead of marking with some sort of substance, you just use your bone folder or your hair marker and make a crease and then you'll stitch right along that crease. Um, I found this one pretty inexpensively at Daiso. Um, and you know to last a long time. Again, I've had this bone folder for 20 years, so um, it'll last a long time. You could probably even use a butter knife or something like that. So what you wanna do, I kind of like to find the center point on here. So I'm just gonna line up my ruler right here. It's really handy to have one of these rulers, and then you can just use your hair marker like that. Hopefully I'm pronouncing hair marker right, or your bone folder, um, whatever works. And right now I have my fabric on top of my batting and it might be easier to use your hair marker or bone folder with the batting underneath. Um, and then some of the other tools that might be better to use them without the batting underneath. You'll have to do a little experimentation with the tool that you're using. So if I wanted to stitch kind of one inch lines all the way across. I would take, you know, make that first mark. Let's do it with our chalk so we can see it. Maybe we'll try it without the batting. And then because this ruler is clear, I can just look at it. You could even use the grid on your cutting mat. I'll go down here and mark another line. And then, yeah, so here the chalk works better without the batting but I believe the bone folder or hair marker will work better with the batting underneath. It just depends on what kind of tool you're using. So here's another line. Um, 
and then you can you can just go all the way down and then flip it around and go back the other way another way to create temporary lines on your fabric is to use some sort of low tack tape so all you'll do is take a piece of tape and you can line it up and then you'll stitch right next to that piece of tape and so you can go ahead and just put a whole bunch of pieces of tape right next to where you want to be stitching all the way down your fabric another tool that i want to show you is the walking foot and this is a very useful tool for quilting as well as sewing other things and here i've put in this quilting guide so this is just a metal thing and as you stitch it will be a guide so when you are stitching your fabric you can line up this little quilting guide along one of your other stitching lines or <laughs> or other lines that you've marked and use that as a ruler hi sweetie so this is just a metal piece that you can pull out and put back in and then you can use your ruler to decide how far you want your stitching lines to be apart. So after you have all the lines marked on your fabric, you want to bring your batting over if it's not already and get it all lined up. And then you can use pins or safety pins and just put some pins in here to hold it together. And you wanna do it all over and just keep everything really wrinkle free and flat. Okay, I'm gonna continue getting my pattern pieces ready to quilt and I will meet you at the sewing machine. So here I am at the machine and I'm going to start by putting on my walking foot. You might need your screwdriver to do this. You might be able to do it by hand, but you usually have to remove the whole shank from the machine. And you should look at your machine manual to see how to do this. Um, this machine, I put it on the shank and then there's a little part in the back that I have to pop in as well. So you just wanna make sure all the pieces are in there and really secure. Sometimes there will be a little arm from the walking foot that comes up and hooks onto an arm um, right next to your needle. So I am going to use my screwdriver and just tighten this up a little bit. Make sure it's really secure. I'm using a 100% cotton thread and a straight stitch. Because I already have the lines marked on the fabric, I'm not going to use the little metal guide this time. So I like to start in the middle of the piece and then work my way out. So I'm going to start right here. I'm just gonna go and stitch straight down and pull my pins away so I don't stitch over them. And kind of as you get more and more stitching lines, the stitching will hold your fabric and batting secure and you won't need those pins anymore. I'm stitching past the outline for my slipper and then down here kind of in the selvage area I will connect to another one of these lines. So I'll just stitch down here because I just want to reduce the number of times that I have to start or end a thread. And I'm just going to center this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going back down, stitching another one of these straight parallel lines. just repeat that all the way. Now I also have this kind of diamond design that I want to do in the middle and usually I might just go ahead and do the whole straight lines on the side but for this example I'll go ahead and stitch this diamond and I just want to connect these dots with having as few points where I need to start and stop in the middle as possible because when I'm stitching this quilting, I don't want to have any back stitching visible on the quilting, on the slipper. I'm just going to try to connect these as much as possible. <laughs> so 
So now I'm stitching and I actually want to end right here. So what I'm going to do, you have a couple options. You can stitch right to that end point and then you can just put your stitch length at zero and stitch in the same spot over and over or you can leave a tail and then bring those both of those threads to the back side and tie it in a knot by hand. Instead of having the machine cut it, I'm going to pull this out, grab my scissors, and I'll leave kind of a long end. And then on the back side, I'll pull this bobbin thread and you might need a pin to help you just pull your top thread to the wrong side. And then you wanna take these and do a little square knot. So anywhere where you want to end the design in the middle or start the design in the middle, you'll want to do this. And then we can just cut these threads on the wrong side and they'll just be on the inside of our slippers. And here we don't see any back stitching, so it all just looks really smooth and even. I'm going to go ahead and finish quilting this slipper. So I wanted to show you another example where I just used the little bar on the the um, walking foot as my guide. Here I'm quilting the sole of the slipper and I'm actually using two layers of batting just to give it a little more cushioning. I should have mentioned earlier that the space between your quilting lines should be designated by the kind of batting that you're using and the batting will usually tell you if you how um, kind of what the maximum amount of space between the quilting line should be. So it might say one inch or two inches. Um, just refer to your batting to see how closely you need to quilt. So with my Hera marker, I marked a line going down the middle. So I'm gonna start right there. And I have my little metal guide set up for a one inch distance. I'm going to do one back stitch, which probably isn't necessary because I'm going to cut it away. Okay, so now I'm outside the edge of the slipper sole and I'm just going to stitch away a little bit, pivot again, and you want to keep your needle down when you pivot. Um, so I'm going to put this down and you can see my little metal guide is lining right up with my previous line of stitching. So I'm just going to wash that and let's move this pin. We'll put it over here, keep it a little out of the way. Just keep that guide lined up with our stitching. Okay. So at this point, if we're going to go back down this way, we won't have a line of stitching. So let's stitch around to this other side and we'll kind of go from the, the left to the right across the sole. So I think that's pretty good. Okay. I'm just going to cut that and move over. You can just cut the thread and go back to the top and stitch down or turn around and stitch from the bottom up. Sometimes this little uh, metal bar will go up and down, so you can just move it back into place and get a little bit closer. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going, stitching more lines. You might want to, you might decide you want to come back and stitch like right in the middle between these lines, or you could do a zigzag down the bottom. Whatever you want to do, um, stitch it as much as you want or as much as you don't. Just refer to your batting for kind of the minimum amount of quilting that you need to do. Well, I hope that you found that video helpful. Here is my finished 
quilted fabric, I'm gonna have this triangle centered over the back heel of the slipper. And I'll make sure to share a photo of the finished slippers on my Instagram account. There'll be a link in the show notes to the Instagram account. And if you haven't gotten a copy of the slippers pattern yet, it's available in my shop and I'll put a link down there. This is a really fun pattern. It's a great way to use scraps and to try your hand at quilting. It also is very size inclusive and it goes from a women's size four to a men's size 14. That's US shoe sizes and it's kind of approximate. It's a really great pattern for the whole family. I release about one new video a week with tips and tutorials and lots of talk about sewing. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button down below and then hit the bell to be notified every time I release a new video. Happy sewing.